All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I have the story for you. This is truly the story of the week. This, uh, this is based on an email that was sent from a subscriber, and he shares his story about how uh, he met his wife. He was 31 years old, and she was 20, and he just started his own construction company. He was making good money, and he says that she was a knockout. She was like a 10 in the looks and body type department, and he really hit the jackpot because, in his opinion, he was a 5. And they, get, and they get married and all that, and they eventually have two kids, and obviously a few years between the kids. And then one day... One thing leads to another where he discovers that his son isn't his. And then as things go, time goes on, he discovers, guess what? The other child isn't his either. And this whole, this whole thing leads to a down the path where you're going to see very interesting twists and turns that you never see coming. Believe me, once I started reading this, I was hooked. But ultimately, guys, and also, by the way, you're going to see when he eventually tracks down the real, the baby daddy of his kids and what happens there. And you're going to see ultimately, guys, that uh, how ultimately, in the end, he comes out on top, which is awesome. And because believe me, the woman he married is trash. So anyhow, guys, that'll be a really good one to cover. So starts off, he says, hi, SSM. I've been working up the courage to send you my story. In some ways, what happened to me still hurts knowing just how badly I was betrayed. My story has a lot of weird twists, but I think it will show, it will help show us guys we should stick together and how the good endings are not always what we expected them to be. Well, bro, this this story, your story definitely has a lot of twists and turns, and I didn't see it coming for what, what you were talking about here. He says, I met my wife when I was 31 years old and she was 20. I had spent my 20s working in construction, and by the time I was 28, I would started my own company. Awesome, bro. Good for you. By the time I met my wife, I was making about $110,000 a year. We dated for four years before I proposed to her. I'm a five at best in the looks department, where my wife is a 10. My wife had a perfectly shaped body with a big rack and a big round butt. But since I've been working hard to make something of myself, I never felt she was out of my league and never put her on a pedestal. Good for you, man. Hey, you're a business owner and you're going places. So why should you put her on a pedestal? Why should you put, especially if she's hot? Because I guarantee her whole life she's used to guys putting her on a pedestal because she's hot. My below average looks never bothered me. I've always had a strong work ethic and my wife said that she found that attractive. And I believe that actually. In spite of what happens, I do believe she probably found that that drive to succeed and do well attractive. But also, let's be honest here, she, I'm sure she found the resources that you're bringing in and what we'll be bringing in the future attractive as well. We, we got to keep it real here. A few years before we got married, she got pregnant with our little daughter. That was the happiest day of my life, seeing my little girl being brought into this world. Then a few years after our marriage, she gave birth to our son. I had no reason to suspect that the kids were not my biological children until one day my son was riding his bike and crashed it. When he crashed his bike, he got impaled by a piece of rebar and required a blood transfusion. I volunteered myself as a blood donor, and my wife freaked out and insisted that she be the one to donate her blood. Huh. I wonder what that, what that is all about. The way my wife reacted instantly set up alarm bells in my head. It was literally like she was trying to hide something. My son made a full recovery, but he had to stay in the hospital for about a week. Now, a lot of guys in a situation like that either wouldn't connect the dots, or they would be almost like afraid to find out. But this guy, obviously, he knew something was up and he pursued what was going on. He says, while I was worried about my son's injury, my wife's reaction kept nagging at me. I talked about it with some friends and they told me it sounds like she didn't want them to use my blood for the transfusion because she suspected that I wasn't his biological father. I can't imagine that conversation. And let me tell you, this guy obviously has good friends that they would actually tell him this. Because a good friend will tell you things you need to hear, even if you don't really want to hear. I mean, think about it. Tell, telling your buddy that it's a possibility your wife cheated and all this stuff. I mean, that's not going to go well with a lot of guys. But that's good he has them. Because she suspected I wasn't his biological father. This realization felt like I got the wind knocked out of me and for a few minutes. I felt numb. They told me I should get a DNA test as soon as possible. The next day, I went back to my hospital and asked them if they could get me a DNA test of my son to see if he's mine. And sure enough, he isn't mine. 
That sucks. Now, he doesn't say, I don't recall how old these kids are, but they're obviously, um, they're not teenagers, but I don't think they're like really little either. I mean, if he was learning to ride a bike, obviously he had to be at least five years old, maybe a little, little more than that. And actually, if he fell off his bike, no training wheels, so probably, maybe six and up. Who the hell knows? But he's had these kids for a while. After I got the results, I went to my son's hospital room and he was sleeping. Looking at him sleeping there, I realized that regardless of whether or not he was mine, I still loved him very much and I spent the rest of my day crying my eyes out. Well, bro, that, that says a lot about you. I mean, there are guys that would be like, that's it. He's not mine. I'm done. Who knows what anybody how anybody would handle that situation. You have to be in that situation. But it shows you're a good man and that you love those kids no matter what, in spite of what she did. It's not their fault. And obviously you raised them. He says, then I realized I need to find out my daughter was my biological child. However, I decided I wouldn't break the news to anybody until my, after my son was fully recovered. In the meantime, I decided that I need to talk to a lawyer about a divorce. Good for you, man. Find out all your options, good, bad, and ugly, from the attorney. Again, a lot of guys wouldn't do this. The lawyer I talked to told me that since I don't live in a no-fault divorce state, New Jersey... If I, can prove, if I can prove that my son is not biologically mine, she gets reduced alimony. And if my daughter isn't mine, I don't have to pay any alimony, and she is entitled to absolutely nothing. Sweet. Now, I don't know when this was. I don't know if New Jersey is still a no-fault divorce day. I mean, yes, I can Google it, but I don't know. So any of you guys from Jersey can let me know. About a month after my son fully recovered, I confronted my wife about what I found out. She insisted it wasn't true. Well, there's a freaking surprise. Hey, DNA, DNA results right here. I showed her the DNA results and she accused me of fabricating the results so I didn't have to take care of him. Unbelievable. Just own up to it. Admit it. It's amazing the, the, the reaction women get when, when, they, when, when they're caught. They lie, they cry, all this shit. I told her that she needs to tell them now or I would. She panicked and tried to accuse me of trying to break up the family. She's the one that screwed up the family. I told her that it's best to tell them now, then and then have them find out, then have them find out as adults. She started crying and eventually agreed. We sat the kids down and I told them what I found out. I told both of them that regardless, I still loved them very much and wanted to be their father, but that I was divorcing their mom. Both of the kids looked revolted when they heard the news and started crying and calling my wife all manners and names and said that I was a better parent than her. We had our daughter DNA tested and sure enough, she wasn't mine either. Oh my God, this poor guy. All this time. He was on cloud nine. He had to sound like he had a really good life, family life. I don't know. He didn't, he didn't mention how things were hurt with him and the wife, but it's one thing if it's one, but both because the girl was first. Then a few years later, the boy was, was born. So a couple different times, the cheating. The news of my daughter's DNA test uh, only made my kids hate their mother even more. After the results, my wife pleaded with me to give our marriage another chance and that she was so sorry. Get the hell out of here. Give it another chance. You're the one that ruined it. Why would he stay with her? His kids, although he loves them, are walking, talking proof that what she did. He's never going to trust her again. And believe me, as if she didn't have low res didn't respect him already, she'd have even less respect for him if he stayed with her. And she knew darn well she was toast because in that state, like you said, because of the uh, no fault divorce state, he he wouldn't have to give her anything. So she knew that her meal ticket's gone. Bye bye. And by the way, she was once a ten when she was twenty years old, but now that she's older and had two kids, she is uh she's going down on the totem pole real quick. Sirens. It goes on. I told her no, and this was too big a betrayal for me to let slide, and that whatever happens now is a consequence of her actions. Her tone instantly shifted to her blaming me for destroying the family, and that it was my fault that she cheated on me. Unbelievable. How many times have I done stories like this, guys? First is the denial, then they come to terms with it, then they beg and plead to give the guy a second chance, him to give, us, give her a second chance, then when she realizes that's not happening, then they twist around and blame him. No accountability. I didn't respond to her and just walked away. While I was walking away, she shouted the name of the biological father and told me that he was better than me. 
Well, she might as well just, I'm surprised she didn't yell, you have a small, you know what or something. That's usually the other thing that happens. Once the divorce was finalized, I got full custody of the kids since my wife had no way of making an income. Awesome. After some time, the kids were able to accept the situation and it was and we love each other no differently. My now ex-wife's brother-in-law and father-in-law, uh, my, my now my now ex-wife's brother and the father, who were once his brother-in-law and father-in-law, have been very supportive of me and apologized for her behavior. Awesome. My ex-wife's sister and mother have been the exact opposite and accused me of manufacturing the DNA results, tried saying that, it, that I was the one who cheated on her, and even tried accusing me of doing bad things to the kids. Unbelievable. I'm sure many of you guys who've been watching me a while have heard me do stories where the guy finds out his fiance or girlfriend or wife is cheating, and a lot of times it's the the father will really apologize for the actions of his daughter. He'll feel bad, but a lot of times the mother is the exact opposite, and sometimes her female, her sisters, whatever, you know, making up some bullshit and twisting it around. It's unbelievable. Talk about a divided household, huh? <clears throat> Unfortunately, I still have to deal with them from time to time as my daughter was and still is very close to the sister and mother-in-law. But usually the uh, brother and father-in-law will deal with them instead. When my ex-wife shouted out the name of the biological father, I couldn't get it out of my head. I tried to move forward with my life and just focus on taking care of the kids and my work. But I couldn't help laying awake at night hearing the name over and over again. I decided I needed to track him down to confront him and get closure. I know this isn't the best thing to do, but at the time, I had a hard time keeping my emotions under control, and it was torturing me. Well, my man, you were doing... That's a gamble, because you don't know how that would go, who this is, what could happen, and it could haunt you. But, guys, I told you this story has interesting twists and turns, so listen to this. I hired a private investigator and tracked the guy down to a bar that he frequents. My plan was to get him talking and see what he knew about my wife. When I first saw him, I could see why my wife got with him. He was a few years older than my wife, and like my wife, he was a 10 in the looks department and had blonde hair like her. I have no problem admitting that he and my ex would look good together. I started talking with him and he had no idea who I was. I learned that he was an electrician who worked primarily on solar panel installations and maintenance and made a good living. Strangely enough, the more I talked to him, the more I liked him. I could tell he was a genuinely good guy. A lot of guys would actually just start swinging right then and there. But this guy obviously realized this guy has no idea. No idea probably that she was married. No idea that he has kids out there. And you know what? There are a lot of guys that I've done stories where... The wives or girlfriends are cheating on their guy, and these guys they cheated with, they have absolutely no clue at all, especially when they have kids out there. I then steered our conversation to the topic of relationships. He told me about a girlfriend he had several years ago who let him at, who let him after a year without saying anything, <coughs> oh, excuse me, who left him after a year without saying anything, and then showed back up again years later. Ding, ding, ding. <clears throat> he said he was reluctant to get back with her, but she told him that she had to deal with family emergency, and he relented. She left him again after a couple of months and told him that she was married and was pregnant with her husband's second child. Then he found out... At that point, he found out that she was married. He told me how devastated he felt when he found out that she was married with kids, and he never got into another relationship after that. Yeah, this guy didn't trust women after that. <clears throat> so again, it sounds like... the. He didn't know about the husband until when she was leaving and after she got pregnant the second time. He thought she was the perfect woman and they talked about having kids together. He said if he knew she was married that he would have never gotten with her and it was against his principles to get with another man's woman. There, that's, that's good to hear. There are some guys out there that have some principles and I encourage all you guys, for you guys who are dating and pick up, you know, obviously do your homework to find any gals you're with. Make sure they don't have a boyfriend or fiance or married guy. I think it's just wrong to get involved with uh, another guy's girl. There are plenty of women out there. I don't care how hot she is. Seriously. And karma's a bitch and if you do something like that and you're willingly, it'll come back to bite you in the ass one day. Mark my words. It may take 20 years a karma will bite you in the ass. So anyhow, he says, to sum it up, he was obviously talking about my ex-wife, but didn't know it. I was able to piece together that my wife left him each time she got pregnant from him and lied to him about who the father was. 
It was after finding that out that I realized he was just as much of a victim of my ex-wife's manipulation and deceit as I and the kids were. After a few hours at the bar, I came clean to him and told him who I was and what the situation was. Man, I'd love to be uh, sitting there at the bar, kind of listening in on that conversation. Wow. He, he was shocked and almost punched me. And he says, I can't, I can't say I blame him. He eventually calmed down and even told me that he was sorry for sleeping with my wife. I told him it was okay and that if he wanted to meet, the, meet his kids, that I would, talk, I would talk to them about it. He told me that he needed some time to process what he just heard and we had exchanged numbers. Man, when I read, read your story the first time, I did not see it going this way. Let me tell you. And of course, some people are going to say this is bullshit. I get that all the time. It's not. I continued talking with him for the next few weeks. As strange as it sounds, he and I were quickly becoming fast friends. We had a lot in common and shared many interests even beyond being betrayed by the same woman. I then sat my kids down and told them that I found out that who their biological father was and that I think he's a really good guy and if they ever wanted to meet him, he would like to meet them. They were reluctant at first, but eventually just decided they wanted to meet him anyway. Uh, he and I both agreed that I am still their father, but he has since become like an uncle to them. I even introduced them to the brother-in-law and father-in-law. Uh, at first, they didn't trust him, but once I vouched for him, they welcomed him with open arms. All right, never saw it coming going this way, guys. Even though this wasn't exactly the happy ending I was hoping for, and the circumstances are beyond abnormal, I was able to build a new family with my kids, their father, and even the brother-in-law and father-in-law. Even my parents still accept the kids as their grandkids, and even came to accept their, their father as a good man. Good. Those kids deserve it. You deserve a turmoil, turmoil-free life. Ten years later, we are still very close. Ex-wife, sister-in-law, mother-in-law are still trying to make me and the kid's father out to be monsters. Unbelievable. It is amazing how they stick together. But the brother-in-law and father-in-law have our backs. The children are still not talking to their mother. Wow. After all these years, they're still not talking to her. I try to convince them to reconcile with her since she is their mother, but they won't do it. Man, this guy's a good guy. A lot of guys wouldn't do that. My daughter just got married, and I was the one to walk her down the aisle. Her father was there, too, and even he insisted I be the one to hand it off to her off to the husband. The sister-in-law and mother-in-law were also at the wedding, but I managed to avoid them. My son told me that when he gets married, neither his mother, sister-in-law, or mother-in-law will be invited, as he never really liked them anyway. <laughs> the kid's father now works for my construction company. He runs the team that does the electrical work on the buildings and installs the solar panels. He helped me change my business to adopt a green building construction design to become more eco-friendly, and this has made my business more profitable. Sweet, dude. It still amazes me to this day that the man who I should hate with all my being has turned out to be like the brother I never had. Last I heard, my ex-wife is now working a minimum wage job as a cashier in a grocery store. Ha! She got with another guy who made over 500 k a year, but he dumped her. But not until after marrying her and getting... And, get, and, and her getting 100000 alimony, which she blew within, wait for it, one year. She is now living with the mother-in-law, and her life is a mess. Hey, like I said about karma. So she was smoking hot when she was younger, no problem getting guys. But as she got older, the looks were fading. Her uh, value, let's be honest here, in terms of uh, attraction to men. And like you said, she got dumped by the guy that made a lot of money. This is karma, and her life is a mess. Good. My decision to track down the kid's father was definitely not a healthy decision, and I got lucky that things have turned out the way they have. And even though things worked out for me, I still recommend that nobody else do this. Yeah. Yeah, you got really lucky there. That could have gone a whole different way. And I wouldn't recommend anybody would do that, but hey, that's what happened here. So anyhow, guys, like I said, definitely the story of the week. I didn't see that coming when I first read it because, like, holy crap, he tracked him down. You would think he'd track him down and beat the crap out of him. No, he, he wanted to find out the story, did some detective work, and there you go. The guy had no idea. And there are a lot of guys out there that hook up with women, and it turns out they're married or whatever, and they don't know. You know, and it, it isn't their fault because they don't know. So, but anyhow, guys, that was very interesting there. I'm glad to the guy who wrote me this. I thank you for sharing the story. It's very interesting. I'm glad you're doing really well and the kids are well and all that. And... I'm also glad to hear that the piece of crap ex-wife of yours is uh, not doing so well. Occasionally, guys, justice is served. So, all right, guys, that is it for today. 
Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And guys, if you ever have a great story you want to share with me about your life, like this guy, or not necessarily like this guy's story, but you know what I mean, something that you've overcome, something, some interesting story, by all means, email it to me, okay? My link to the email is in the description or the about section of this page. And of course, this also counts for great articles or stories you find online. Send them to me too. I can always use good info for good content for videos. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.